sa inyong testimony. So at least no, merong naalala. Well, itago lahat. And then, so, <clears throat> kaya mga lalaki, no? Yung nakatago, huwag na hanapin. <laughs> okay, um, ako nito po salamat din sapagkat through that, through that nakita ako na at least may nag-impact yung ating series and it will encourage me more na i-share. No? It will encourage me more to share this. Kasi kung wala rin namang, wala, wala rin namang natututo, then <laughs> ano, ano pang dahilan para i-share, para i-share ko siya. But then, I, I, I believe na at least, if not all, at least meron kayo at meron kayo kahit pa paano natutunan. And siguro naman, ibibigyan ko kayo lahat ng pagkakataon ay um, meron kayong isi-share. Uh, anyways, or um, ay, paano ba sabihin yun? It is not because of me. Okay, remember, it is not because of me. It is not because of how I delivered the, the message. It is all because of the Word of God. The Word of God alone can give an impact to our lives. Amen? So, actually, alam nyo, kahit hindi ko siya to share kung kagaya nga nasabi ni Sir Wynn kagabi, if we are just faithful to read the Bible, you don't need any more series. Amen? If we're just faithful to read the Bible. So, I encourage you na kung ako bilang lalaki, nagkaroon sa akin ng impact yung kwento ng babae, how much more sa inyo na pagkayo nabasa niya siya ng personal. Amen? So, I encourage, I encourage you to read your, your Bible. And this evening, this will be the summary of all the things that we had learned so far from the series. So, therefore, this evening, I will not get uh, your time for, for long. I will just speak for short, hopefully for 15 to 20 minutes. And I will give you things that are so very important regarding how Jesus relate or how Jesus view and how Jesus respected women. Amen? So, the, this evening, the title of our lesson, or the title of our topic this evening, No Man Can Say I Love You. No Man Can Say I love you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we would like to plead for your mercy. Father God, it came with me the message this evening. As it gave an impact in my life, made me give also an impact in the life of my sisters. I pray, Lord, that may I continually take away myself. Your Holy Spirit be upon me and be upon each one of us. And may your name be lifted up. Your glory alone will be seen magnified in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The title of our series, No Man Can Say Wala akong wala akong parangoy. No Man Can Say I Love You. The subtitle, Five Women, One Lover. Five Women, One Lover. Interesting ba? So hopefully, ngayong kami ay uuwi tayo sa ating mga tabarang layo na uuwi tayo sa ating mga rooms na dala yung blessing ng Panginoon, dala yung kanya, yung assurance that indeed His grace is sufficient. Before we mag-start, I would like to share to you my experience just a while ago. Uh, naglaro kami kanina ng basketball. Kasi so, naglaro kami kanina ng basketball, habang naglaro kami, ako ay natapakan. Hindi, hindi daw na ako bitter bro, no? Pero gusto ko na i-share. Uh, natapakan ako, tapos ito yung nangyari sa daliri ko. Kita nyo? Ayan, masa- masakit. Masakit siya. Pero kanina, yung natapakan siya, syempre kasi hindi ako nag-iingat, so natapakan siya. Yung una, hindi mo mararamdaman, parang tumatakbo pa ako, okay pa. Tapos yung dinignan ko, sabi ko, bakit may clean na yung kongo ko? <laughs> may clean na siya, kasi ginanong ko, pag ganong putol na pala. So, so, masakit, masakit siya. Doon ko lang na-realize na masakit. And, nandito ako sa bahay, nandito ako sa bahay, sabi ko, Panginoon, ano yung lesson na gusto niyo ituro sa akin? Kasi every time na may nangyayari sa akin, I always ask God, Lord, what, what is the lesson you want me to learn? So, nagtanong ako sa Panginoon, then, immediately, tin- sinabi niya sa akin yung, yung reflection. Sabi ng Panginoon, alam mo, Dominic, yung buhay ay ganyan, inside, no? Ka- hindi na, minsan, madalas. 
madalas na hindi tayo nag-iingat. So, sa pananalita natin, hindi tayo nag-iingat. Sa, sa pinatin, yung, yung reflection lang yun, sa pananalit natin. And any, any, any part or any aspect of our lives, we are not actually taking care of how we act. And we are thinking that there, walang ano, walang epekto. No? Parang, parang, parang okay lang siya. But later on, we, are, we, 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 we will realize na katulad yung nangyari sa akin, later on ko lang na-realize na masakit pala. And later on, doon lang natin ma-realize, yung ginawa ko pala, napakalaki pala ng impact niyo sa iba. Yung salita ko pala na hindi napakaganda, yung salita ko pala na hindi mabuti, kala ko okay lang na nag-joke out, as yung pala, later on, malaki na yung impact niya. No? Yung, yung pananamit ko, inisip ko na, na okay lang siya. Unconsciously, parang okay lang naman, siguro. Pero hindi ko alam na marami na palang tao ang na wala ang kanilang kalitasan dahil doon. And later on mo lang siya marirealize. At marami na ang bumagsak bago mo lang narealize. So doon ko narealize na kailangan natin mag-ingat. Amen? Amen. So therefore, as daughters of God, we need to take care of ourselves. And we need to take care of our salvation. Because taking care of our salvation will also mean we are also taking care of the salvation of others. Amen? So this evening, daughters of God, we are, we are oh you are, you are, daughters of God. The title, again, no man can say, I love you, five women, one lover. So this evening, we are going to study five characters in the New Testament. So naalala nyo, yung mga last, mga last topics natin, lahat sila ay saan matatagpuan? Old Testament. And remember, when God said, let us make man, the one who is speaking that time is no other than God the Father. God the Father is speaking to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our own image. And so therefore, throughout the Old Testament, though Jesus is already present in the, New, in the Old Testament, but the very, yung pinaka, yung pinaka dominant in the Old Testament is no other than the Father or the, the God of Father. Are you getting now the point? Now, why, why I'm telling you that point? Because I would like to tell you that in New Testament, the one who is most dominant is no other than who? Jesus Christ. So now, how are we going to reconcile? How are we going to meet the two? That in the Old Testament, God the Father is the one who is dominant, and in the New Testament, the one who is dominant is God the Son. So let me tell you this, in John chapter 14, verse 7 says, If you have known me, Jesus is still is speaking to Philip, you would have known my Father also. What, what, what again? If you had what? Known me, you would have known my Father also. Why? Jesus said to him, verse 9, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And so therefore, therefore, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 is really true when it says that Jesus is the very glory of the Father. If you have seen Jesus Christ, if you, have ex if you have experienced Jesus Christ, you also experience God of Father. Amen? And so therefore, everything that Jesus did in the New Testament are the things that also God the Father did in the Old Testament. Are you getting the point? And that's why I would like to sum up everything that we have tackled in the past nights regarding how Jesus relate or how Jesus treated the women in the New Testament. So now, let's start. Let's go to Luke. If you have your Bible, I have no PowerPoint because this will be just a short message because this will be just a summary of what we had tackled. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8.
Luke chapter 8, verse 40. That's it. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had only daughter, about 12 years old of age, and she was what? Dying. But as he went, the multitudes drove him. So as Jesus went to the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler, or the Jewish ruler, the multitudes tried to throw Jesus Christ, tried to press Jesus Christ why? because they also want to experience healing from Jesus. Now what happened is, as they throw Jesus Christ, in verse 43 says, now a woman, what again? Now a woman, that is the first woman we are going to study this evening. Now a woman having a flow of blood. What is that? What is that? What is that? Flowing of blood. Bleeding. Bleeding. Okay. So should we say in the term of the girl, monthly period? No? But this is very, this is, this is very crucial. Why? Because this is not only monthly. Why? It took for how many years? Wow. Like actually, when I when I read this, when I read this a while ago, this morning, actually the, the topic that we are going to study this evening is my devotional this morning. When I read this, though I read it already, I cannot imagine having a flow of blood for 12 years. I cannot imagine. You know why? Because my sister, when she had her monthly period, alam niyo yung nagkawin siya ng monthly period yung nasa Mindoro, Mindoro kami, halos mamatay na siya. Monthly pa lang yun. Ito, 12 years! How will you explain that? It took her 12 years. It, was, it says here, it says here, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. Now, this is very important to notice, my, my sister's wife, because in their times, in their times, when you have low of blood, you are unclean. Siguro wala siyang impact sa inyo, no? But I would like to, to explain you, to you. How would you like to be excluded among the people? To be isolated? How would you like that? Like for example, you are staying here in, you are staying here in, in Chrysanthemo. Then suddenly, you had your, uh, let's say, buluto. What is the English for buluto? Chicken fox, okay? Fox, fox, ba? Fox. Fox. Okay. So suddenly, you had your chicken fox. Okay, now what happened, what happened is, your dean told you, you must be isolated. How would you like that? How would you like that? Who, who among you experienced that already? Di ba ina-isolate yung mga ano, yung mga may bulutong? Di ba anong, anong pakiramdam pag na-isolate kayo, pag hiniwalay kayo sa tao? Wala kayong kausap, doon lang kayo sa bahay, kailangan nyo magpahinga, anong ano? Pakiramdam. Masarap ba? Masaya ba? Hindi, di ba? Yung ako yung nagkasakit ako, nasa klinik ako, sabi ko, ayoko na din sa klinik. No, parang, Hindi ko ma-imagine yung buhay na nasa klinik ka lang habang buhay. No? But, you know what, my friend? This is 12 years. This is 12 years. 12 years of isolation. 12 years of having... How should I say that? Nairapon tuloy ako mag-English. 12 years na ikaw ay nakahiwalay sa mga tao. 12 years na walang lumalapit sa'yo. Alam niyo kung bakit? Kasi once na may lumapit doon sa isang babae, once that a man 
or any any person who come to that woman who has flow of blood and if you touch her you will be unclean as well and so that's why that is the reason why there are no people who is who, who are touching he, her are you getting the point ang, ang problema kahit gusto niya makipag-usap sa tao yung mga tao lumalayo sa kanya kasi yung mga tao ang kaisipan nila kapag lumapit sila sa kanya magiging madumi sila Have you experienced that point in your life when you want to talk to someone but that someone judge you? And that someone don't want to talk to you because he or she is thinking that you are a sinner. And how do you feel when you experience that, that kind of experience? Let's say your friend, you, you did wrong or you, you have done wrong to your friend. And suddenly, you want to talk to them, but they are the one who is getting away from you. It is very hard the situation of this woman. Second, wala na siyang pera. She spent all of her money just to find healing. But you know what? times when you have nothing anymore. That's the time Jesus comes. Amen? Amen? When you have nothing anymore, that's the time Jesus comes. It says here, came from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately what? Immediately for 12 years. But when he, when she touched the border, when we say the border, the the, the if you're if you're going to imagine the dress of Jesus Christ, the the robe of Jesus Christ at the time, the border means the very end of his cloth, his robe. Just touching that very end, the term is hem. Just touching that hem. This very woman immediately experience healing. And you know what? This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Why? Jesus asked the disciples who touched me. The problem, how are you going to ask who touched you when there are many people touching you? Are you getting the point? When there is a stamping, you will you will never realize who where the people touch you, right? And there is stopping in that time. The people is thronging to Jesus, they are pressing Jesus Christ because they want also to experience healing. Not because they want Jesus, but they just want the power of Jesus. But this very woman who have nothing anymore saw Jesus Christ and having that faith touching the very end of the garment of Jesus and Jesus says you touch me and you know what the very reason Jesus told that and asked that the disciples is because the touch that Jesus experienced is the touch of him I'd like to give you the first point no man can say I love you for you can only experience healing from Jesus Christ. How many here can tell me that there is a man who can stand right before you and say I can heal your wounds? Who can tell me is there any man who can stand right before you and tell, I can heal that wound in your heart? But you know what? By faith, having that faith, though you cannot see Jesus Christ, though you can only see the very edge of his garment, Jesus can still tell you, you have touched me and I love you. Jesus, who can 
Sí. Ay, no. Second. Second. That's it. Chapter, let's, let's go back to chapter 8, or chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, Luke chapter 7, verse 36. Chapter 7, verse 36. Now, the first point that I would like to, to you to learn in the story from that woman who had experienced a flow of blood, there is no man can say I love you to you, because Jesus is the only one can bring healing to your wounded heart. Second point, verse 36 says, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. This is Simon. Simon the Pharisee asked Jesus to eat with him in his house. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And what? Behold! And look! A woman in her in where? In the city who was what? Who was what? Who was what? The second woman that I would like you to learn this evening is a woman who is a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet, Behind him weeping, and she began to wash his feet with what? Tears, and wipe them with what? Hair of her head. You know what? When you are in the time of Jesus Christ, when you are in the time of Jesus Christ, as a woman, you can never do that. And you must never do that. Because to them, a loose hair, a loose hair, and wiping the feet of someone, especially man, with your loose hair, means you are attracting him for a sexual activity. Are you getting the point? But this woman, recognized by Jesus, like Rahab, who was recognized by the Father. Why? Because this very woman has that good intention. Why did she wipe the feet of Jesus? Why did she wipe the feet of Jesus? You know why? Because she cannot pour out the very fragrant oil that she has to the head of Jesus. Now, I would like you to learn this one. In the time of Jesus, when you have your fragrant oil, that is alabaster, that is the most expensive perfume in their time. And it costs her one year to buy that perfume. And you and she she just poured that that, that perfume once. <clears throat> Are you getting the point? And this is very interesting, why? Kasi kailangan mo siya i-pour out doon sa head. But the woman recognized that she is not worthy to do that. And that's why, kneeling down at the feet of Jesus, she did that at the very feet of Jesus, not on his head. Why? Recognizing that she is not worthy to do that. But you know what? What happened is, what happened is, when that, when that woman poured out that fragrant, that, that perfume, that alabaster oil, when that woman poured out that oil, Judas told Jesus, What? Anong ginagawa nitong babae na to? Sayang! Malaking pera sana yon, Makakatulong sana yun sa may hirap. Anong sabi ni Simon? Jesus, why are you allowing her to enter in my house? She is not allowed her because that is a public feast. And if that is a public feast or if that is a public uh gathering, a woman is not allowed to be with them. But Jesus said, but Jesus said, there 
There are two doctors. There are two doctors. Meron dalawang mangutang. At yung dalawang mangutang, meron siyang sabihin natin 1,000 at 10,000. Ang ginawa ng, ng inatangan, pinatawad yung dalawa. The question of Jesus, who will love more the owner of the money? Sino mas magmamahal doon sa may-ari ng pera? Yung 1,000 o yung 10,000? Yung 1,000 o yung 10,000? Now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, let's take it literally in your life. Let's say, ako, naputol ko lang yung ballpen mo. Okay? Pero, yung isa, naputol niya yung kamay mo. Pero, parehas mo kami pinatawad. Sa tingin mo, sino mas magmamahal sa'yo? Siyempre, naaputol ng kamay, di ba? Pambihira naman, kung hindi ka pa niya mamahalin, ay nako. Di ba? Pinatawad mo na nga. Now, I would like you to learn this principle. That the more you recognize that you are a sinner, the more you can sense that need of Christ. And the more you will love Christ. Because the more you see that you are a sinner, the more that you will need His forgiveness. And the more you were forgiven, the more you will love Him. The problem, the 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 problem is we cannot see our sinfulness, we cannot see our sinful nature, we cannot see that sin inside us, and that's why we cannot love Jesus Christ. And you know what? No man can say I love you because Jesus is the only one who can forgive you. No man can say I love you because Jesus is the only one who can forgive you. Now tell me a man who can stand right before you. Who can stand right before you na brinate mo at sasabihin niya, pinatawad na kita. Hindi mo lang brinate, sinampal mo ba? Tell me. But Jesus, how many times you hurt Jesus? How many times na sinampal natin si Jesus? And yet Jesus, told us you were forgiven because you asked forgiveness and because you love me more. Third, let's go to John. Let's go to John. John chapter 4. I know you know this story. John chapter 4. I know you know this story. This is the story of a Samaritan woman, right? A Samaritan cannot talk or cannot converse with a Jew. We know the story already that a Jew and a Samaritan cannot talk with each other. Why? Because they have this what we call cultural barrier. Because of a culture, they don't want to talk to each other. Let, let's say you are a Filipina and you are an African. You're an African mom, right? No. You, okay, so you came from Papua. Okay, so let's say you came, you came from Papua and you are a Filipina. And there's this what we call cultural barrier. And that, what happened in the time of Jesus, they don't want to talk to each other. But you know what? Jesus is a very radical, revolutionary. Why? He binaliktad niya lahat, lahat ng tradisyon na bawal. He go beyond, he went beyond those traditions just to reach those women. That very women, you know what? That very women says, after after Jesus asking, "Give me water, and I will give you a living water." Then the woman says, "Give me that living water." Jesus said, "Go call your husband." Verse sixteen. Go call your husband and come here. Chapter 17 says, The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Then Jesus said, You have well said, Hanes ka talaga. For you have five husbands. And the one whom you 
Now how? It's not your husband. This woman is a broken woman. A lot of men came to him, and yet she is not satisfied. But when Jesus came, breaking the barrier, giving the living water, Jesus said, I can give you more than what your husband can give you. No husband, no man can say I love you, for I am the only source of the living water. Fourth, let's make it fast. Let's go to chapter 8. Chapter 8. And this is one of my favorite story here. Chapter 8, verse 1. But Jesus went to Mount Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a what? A what? Verse 3. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a what? A woman. This is the fourth woman. Caught in what? Adultery. I told you already in the time of Re in, in the story of Rahab that the most feared woman in their time is an adulterous woman. They don't want an adulterous woman. They hate them. But the problem is when this Pharisee and when this scribe brought this is Mary actually. When they uh, Mary Magdalene, when they brought Mary Magdalene unto Jesus and telling them this woman was caught in in, in, in adultery, the problem is when they caught her, they did not bring also the one whom she had adultery, the man. Because in their time, the man should be there also and be condemned and be stoned and be put to death. Both of them should be put to death. Now, this is, uh, this is very interesting. Why? Because when Jesus saw them, they know that the only one to find fault to Jesus Christ. Why? Because if Jesus said, okay, go, he stoned, he stoned her. If Jesus said that, if Jesus said that to stone her, then the Jews, the Jewish leaders will say to the Roman Empire, oh, you are, you are making a, a rebellion. But when, if Jesus will say, forgive her, then they will say, you are, you are transgressing the law of Moses. So both of the answer of Jesus will cut him into a trap. But you know what, what Jesus said? Verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a, throw a stone at her first. Now, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. I would like to ask you this evening, who among them in that time has no sin? Who among them? I hear that. It is only who. So therefore, when Jesus asked that, when Jesus asked that, who among you here has no sin, he will be the one who will throw the, 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 the first stone. But no one can claim. It is only Jesus. So Jesus is the only one who is capable, who is, who is worthy to throw or to stone the, that woman, right? It is only Jesus. Parang ganito siya. I-re-relate ko sa inyo sa Tagalog. Walang ibang tao doon na hindi na, makasal, na hindi makasalanan. Tama? Ang makasalanan lang, ang hindi na makasalanan doon ay sino nga? Si Jesus. So therefore, si Jesus lang ang tamang tao na pwedeng bumato kay Mary Magdalene. Now, what you point? But did Jesus stone her? You know what? This is the very lesson that I learned from Jesus. The people, the people, the Jews, the scribes, the Pharisees, the men looking at you, the other women looking at you, they are looking at you. 
that it seems you have no future anymore. And they're looking at you, loving their sins and hating you as a sinner. But Jesus told, I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. And that's why he told the girl, sin no more. No man can say, I love you. For it is only Jesus who can have no sin. Or Jesus who has no sin. Tell me a man who can stand right before you this evening. Who can tell you, I have no sin and that's why I can love you. I have no sin and that's why I can love you. Is there any man who can stand right now? There's none. But Jesus standing right before you, telling, I have never seen you, and I love you most. The last story that I would like to tell you. Let's go back to Luke. Let's go back to Luke. Chapter 7, verse 11. Now it happened, the day after that he went into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and a large crowd, and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead what? A dead what? Man was being carried out, the what? The only son of his what? Mother, this, is, this will be our fifth woman. And she was a what? A widow. She's not only a woman, a mother, whom, his, whom her child had died, but she's also a widow. Now, why is the... I told you already before that this Bible does not contain the Word of God, right? Because this is the very Word of God. And therefore, that two points that Luke pointed out in this verse is very important. Why? Because Luke is telling us that this woman has nothing anymore. This mother has nothing anymore. Why? Because the only hope of a widow is her child. Because in their time, when you have no husband, and when you have no child, you are the very, let's say, you are an outcast already. Because you have nothing. You have nothing, you have no future. Because for them, future means having children. And children will, will sustain your lineage, will sustain your generation, will sustain your, your, your family. But in this time, the mother has no more children, has, has no more husband. But Jesus, verse 13, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin. You know what? Future mothers, no man can say I love you. For it is only Jesus who can give you the best future. Tell me any husband who can stand right before your wife and tell their wife, I can give you the best future that, 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 that any woman can have. And I can tell you this evening that as future mothers, no one can tell you that, but He, Jesus alone, can stand right before you and tell you, I'm the only man who can tell you I love you. Because I'm the only man who knows the best future for you. You know what, my sisters? When I read these stories, five women, one lover, I found out that I have no right, if not of Jesus Christ, I have no right to say to a woman, I love you. Man, men, 
How can you tell to a woman, I love you, if you know that there is another man who can love her more? And how can I tell to a woman I love you if I know that Jesus as a man can love her most? And I cannot give anything that Jesus has to love her. Are you getting the point? And so now, my dear, dear sisters, if you are finding satisfaction with a man, if you are finding satisfaction with another being, Let's say a girl, a best friend, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, or a man whom you are looking forward. Dear sisters, you can only find satisfaction and love to a man who can see you with all his heart and with all his life. I love you. Jesus, you know what? And Jesus proved that on the cross of Calvary. When Jesus said, Father, forgive her. Forgive Rani. Forgive Kim. Forgive Miles. Forgive Jimen. Forgive these women. For your will. I have never seen. I am the only source of healing. I am the only one who can give them future. I am the only one who can forgive them more. And I am the only one who can give them the living water. Father, I am the only one who can say and tell them I love you. Friends, are you finding that I love you to someone? How would you how would you like when a man say to you, I love you? How would you like that? How would you like that? Take a living day, right? But this is my question. Have you heard already Jesus telling you I love you? Literally, my friend, literally. Literally, have you ever heard Jesus telling you I love you? Literally. Not yet. And I'm challenging you right now. This is the very reason why I chose this to be the last topic. You might forget all the series that we had. But only thing I would like... Very word of God. And I can prove you in this very word. I can summarize it with a key word. I love you. The very word of Jesus. I can summarize all of his words with the very word I love you. I love you. And right now. I would like to give an appeal. As we heard an appeal song this evening, I would like all of you to close your eyes, bow down your heads, and I would like you to meditate upon the message you have heard this evening. And I would like you to remember when was the time, the very first time I heard, I heard it Jesus telling me I love you. And if ever you did not experience yet that words from Jesus, I would like to challenge you this evening. Lord, pray to him. Lord, help me. Help me to, to hear that word from you. Help me, Lord. Because many times men had told me already they love me and still they broke my heart. Father, I pray, help me. I would like to hear that very word from you, Lord. I would like to hear that words, I love you. 
from the very words of the Bible. Help me, Lord, to have the time to listen from you and have the time to spend my life with a devotion to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us hear the unclean song. inviting everyone for the last chorus. Let's sing together the chorus all together. inviting everyone to sign. same father who can tell us right now, daughter, I love you. Thank you so much, O Father, for bringing Jesus in our lives. You literally tell us, daughter, I love you. Father God, I don't know what the situations of my sisters right now here. Maybe some of them were broken hearted. There are a lot of men already came into their lives and yet they were not satisfied. 
You're always being broken hearted. Or might be, oh Father, there are some of here who have experienced a long time sickness, not only physical but spiritual. And no man can dare to stand right before them, right before her, to say, I can heal your wounds, I can heal the wo your wounded heart. It might be, oh Father, some of my sisters here are those who were being judged by many men. She is a sinner. She is a sinner. No man can dare to stand right before her. Who can tell her I forgive you. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus. Who can not right now, who can stand before us and who was crucified on that same cross. We're criminals. We're broken hearted. We're adulterous women. Where anyone who had sinned against you must be crucified. The same cross where Jesus had laid on his hand and telling us, I love you. Lord, thank you so much. And I pray, O oh Father, that may each moment of our lives after this series, even right now, this evening, O oh Lord, as we go back to our rooms, may we hear that very word from you. Every moment of our lives, I love you. And no man can say, I love you, for I can love you most. Father God, help us to devote our lives to your words and help us to experience that very voice from you. Thank you so much for that message this evening. And thank you for the wonderful promise that you will bring healing, you will bring the living water, you will bring forgiveness, you will bring the future for us and you will bring the very best gift for us. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. All these things we ask. In Jesus' name.